My name is Nathan, and welcome to Stories with a Twang. Today's episode is called, I Used to Sit in a Dead Girl's Chair in Fourth Period History, by Mother. Her name was Cassie. She was a grade above me, so I didn't really know her. I remember everyone at school being freaked out at her death. It's not common for people to die so suddenly around here, especially kids. Even now, as an adult, deaths like that aren't very frequent. Some depressed asshole decided he wanted to take some people with him, so he'd cut through the grass and sped down the opposite side of the highway. He plowed his pickup into Cassie's family van at 100 miles an hour, head on. Killed all four of them, instantly. Wasn't even anything left to bury. Horrific shit. When I got older, my dad told me that he'd been driving home from work and passed by the crash. He said he'd never seen so much blood before. My dad owns a butcher shop, so that surprised me, to say the least. Cassie's death still bothers me to this day. The way she went out just doesn't sit right with me. A whole human life, full of potential, snuffed out in an instant because a suicidal guy couldn't afford a pistol. How is that even remotely fair? There's murderers, rapists, abusers that walk free, living their garbage lives and not facing any consequences while Cassie and her whole family had to die. Shit like that just gets to me. I don't think I'll ever forget Cassie. Not because of who she was in life, like I mentioned, I didn't even know the girl, but her death impacted all of us for a time, longer than even I expected. I found out that she died during fourth period history class in my junior year of high school. I was sitting in the back corner, a spot I tended to prefer in most classes. Quiet, out of the way and I could sneak looks out of the window to daydream. I wasn't the most popular kid in high school, so I only kept company with a small group of friends. Unfortunately for me, none of them had history with me, so I usually sat quiet. Mrs. Sanders came into class that day looking a mess. Her makeup was smeared on her face, and she kept a bundle of tissues clenched in her left hand. She'd obviously been crying hard on the drive here. The whole class quieted down when she came in, fearful of what news she had that made her so broken up. She set her purse down on her desk, then made her way to the front of the class. Class, I have an unfortunate announcement for you all, she said to us through sniffles. Your upper classmate, Cassie Angstrom, has passed away. The class had mixed reactions. A few started sobbing, either because they knew her or because they were just sad about a death so close to home. Most, including me, looked around at each other, not recognizing the girl's name. After Mrs. Sanders calmed down, class carried on as usual with lessons on the Civil War. I couldn't focus. For some reason, all I could think about was Cassie. How come barely anybody knew her? I could excuse myself from being an introvert, but it confused me that barely anyone could remember the girl. I couldn't even put a face to the name. A few days later, still clearly grieving, Mrs. Sanders told us a bit about Cassie. She was a quiet girl, she told us. Didn't talk a lot, which is why many of you may not have known her. She was one of the brightest students I've ever had. She took the same class with me last year just like you all, sat right back there. She pointed right at my seat. It really shouldn't have bothered me. It was just a coincidence. She could have sat in any chair in that room, and it just so happened to be mine. But seeing everyone's head turn toward me made my spine crawl. I had an exam in third period the next day, so I was late to history. Mrs. Sanders was already lecturing when I walked in, so I rushed over to take my seat. 
When I sat, I felt a wet squish on the seat under me, like I had sat on a cake. I sighed, thinking it was a prank from some jock, but when I got up, there was nothing there, no mark on my pants or anything. I got up and touched the chair with my hand and it felt normal. People were starting to look at me, so I quickly sat back down. The same thing happened again the next day, a wet squish when I sat for the first time. I even stayed after class to check under the seat for something, but it looked normal. It continued to happen, but I just started ignoring it. I assumed it was something to do with how old the seat was or my pants material or something, but I didn't give it much thought. On the drives to school, I would pass by the place where the accident happened. There wasn't much money going around in my town back then, so they hadn't done the best job cleaning up the spot. There were still large red patches on the asphalt, turned dark by the sun. I tried not to look whenever I passed. Sometime a few weeks later, I felt the wetness in a different spot this time. I was taking notes for our test that Friday and I felt something slick and soft brush my hand. I immediately recoiled, dropping my pencil on the floor. My skin crawled from the touch, my nerves standing on their ends. The wetness wasn't even the worst part. I had gotten used to that from sitting in the chair. It was that it was cold, like freezing cold. And again, just like the chair, there was nothing there. I had begun thinking that I was sick or something, like something was happening to my skin or organs that was causing these sensations. I got a checkup that weekend and the test came back clear. I was healthy. The next week was finals, so I stayed late at school to study. I was always more focused when I stayed at school to work on stuff. I would always get distracted if I studied at home, either from my own antics or those of my family. I picked my history room to study in, mostly because it had the largest windows. They would usually shut off the lights after hours, so I used the sunlight to read my textbooks. Naturally, I picked my usual seat. The wet squish was gone this time. I noticed immediately, now feeling uncomfortable that the familiar sensation was gone. Odd how that happens. I had sat in the seat earlier in the day, so maybe the metal wasn't as stiff. I just shrugged to myself and got out my materials. I stayed for a few hours, getting as much studying done as I could before the janitors would eventually kick me out at 9. It was around 8.30 when I felt it again that wet brush. I jumped even harder than the last time, forcibly pulled out of my flow state. My heart was racing and I glanced around the room to see if anyone was there. Nothing. I took a few moments to calm down, breathing hard and closing my eyes. When I opened them, I saw darkness. It took this scare to make me realize that I could barely see my notebook and I had been squinting in the darkness for the past 30 minutes. The classroom was covered in shadow, with the posters of dead presidents' faces barely visible in the dark. I started to get creeped out. I took this as my sign to finish up. When I reached to close my notebook, I felt it. A cold, wet slop of what could only be described as flesh draped on my shoulder. I couldn't see it, but I could feel it. And God, I could smell it. I recognized the smell from my times helping my dad at his shop. It reeked of rot and decay, and I could feel streaks of putrid liquid falling down the side of my jacket. I was frozen. I couldn't move. I felt a deep chill form at the base of my spine and crawl to my nape. The previous touches had unnerved me and made me jump, but now I was truly terrified. I could feel its weight pressing on my shoulder, seeping liquid onto my skin underneath. The smell was unbearable. I looked over and I could vaguely make out what was touching me. It was barely visible in the darkness, almost transparent under the shallow glow coming from the streetlight outside. It was a slab of dark red meat, thinner toward the tip. What seemed like bones stuck out from one end and blood was dripping out of tiny holes on the surface of the flesh. I heard a deep, 
guttural sound behind it like someone gurgling water. It continued for a moment and I could faintly make out words behind the noise. That's my spot. Alright everyone, that's it for this week's story. I would like to give a giant thank you to this week's author, Mother, for letting me read their story on the show. If you have any stories you would like me to read on the show, you can send them on over to storieswithatwang at gmail.com. The show is on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Stories with a Twang Podcast. You know it would mean an awful lot to me if you could rate and review the show wherever you listen, and don't forget to like and subscribe on YouTube as well. It could really help the show grow. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and until next time, remember that a little twang goes a long way.